Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, as you must remember, uh, I start to talk about uh, dynamic modeling concepts inside the Xilin Power Factory. And this is the third video related with dynamic modeling, okay? Um, this video today has a, a uh, some theory and then we will go to Dixilin and I would like to show you um, um, some very important aspects about objects and the connection between objects inside Dixilin Power Factory, okay? Um, what I will do now is, uh, um, if you remember, we have been working about Dixilin simulation language, okay, DSL. DSL is the practical way to create new models uh, that you can use for representing components, the dynamic behavior of some components inside the Xilin Power Factory, inside the time domain simulations, RMS and AMT, okay? The idea is that, as you can see over here, inside the Xilin Power Factory, we have the core of the program where you have internal signals and you have predefined or already created models um, where the specific dynamic represented by mathematical equations are already very well defined, okay? For instance, what I am trying to say is this big blue bots over there is representing your network components like the synchronous generator, for instance. And inside that bots, you have the differential equations that define the electromechanical behavior of the synchronous machine. And, and there are many other components, okay? But also inside that, um, that blue box, you will find the differential algebraic model of the network, okay? And also the integration uh, algorithms, the, 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 the algorithms that we use for the numerical integration, okay? If you are using just the basic components, you are inside that box, okay? But when you start to add models to those different synchronous machines, for instance, what you are adding is a new object that inside there are few other objects. But mm, the main idea is that those DSL models here on the right hand side, they have all the mathematical equations describing the dynamic of that model. And the interesting part of the DSL, the Dixilin simulation language, is that you, you, you as a user, you can create your own DSL models and those DSL models can uh, interchange information signals uh, between the core of the Dixilin power factory and also between different DSL models. That is where the beauty of the dynamic simulation language is. Okay, now what is what is the main purpose of the DSL? Well, the DSL is a feature that is included in Power Factory with the idea of creating the dynamic of electrical components or controllers or protections or dynamic of mechanical components or thermodynamic components. Um, and other many things. Okay, if you are if you are interested on on power system protections, you must know you must know about DSL because at the end, protections models inside the Excellent Power Factory they are mainly uh, created using DSL. Okay. What I need that you understand is the DSL is a composed model. And these composed model have different kind of objects. Some of those objects are very abstract and just represent the signal uh, flow and the interconnection between models. And that is what we typically call the composite model frame. 
In that composite model frame, we have a unit that receives the name slot. And as a, a one slot is simple, the location that we can define a model inside that slot. And then we have another object. And as you can see over here, that model is the model definition. Model definition is the smallest, is the smallest um, uh, unit that you can use to create a DSL. Okay. Um, and then we have the graphic interface that is compiling all the models and creating an object that is able to talk with Dixieland Power Factory, but at the same time providing a graphic unit interface to the user. Okay. What I need at the moment is that you realize that at least there are three basic kind of objects, the composite model frame, the model definition, and the common model, okay? In, in, in another video, I will go in full details, but at this moment, what I need is that you remember in the previous class, I was talking about objects inside Power Factory. And I say to you that there are some objects that we use red color, and we call those objects types. But also there are some objects that they are in green color and they represent elements, okay? For instance, here, as you can see, I am presenting some components. For instance, as you can see grid elements over there, you can see that I have the two winding transformer, the synchronous machine, the double fat induction machine, the classical static generator, very useful tool for modeling power electronic devices and many other stuff. And I will have a full video just talking about the static generator. And for instance, other kind of elements that we don't care so much or we don't go deep into them. For instance, the shunt, comp uh, the shunt compensation like the capacitor, okay? As you can see over here, those objects over there, I am presenting the graphical representation, but in green color below, you can see the name of these objects. For instance, you can see that the, on the left-hand side, that is the element TR2. That means the transformer to winding, okay? The two winding transformer. And below, as you must remember in the previous class, I told you about the types. The types are mainly objects that contain data for the models, okay? And as you can see over there, there are some uh, objects that they require types. For instance, the two winding transformer, they require a type. And as you can see over here, that is the name TYPTR2. And for instance, for the asynchronous machine, we have the TYPASIM. That is the asynchronous machine type. But there are some elements, there are some there are some objects, elements, that they don't need. They don't need any kind of types. For instance, the static generator, at the moment, we don't need to define any type. And also the element shunt, also they, they don't require any kind of type, okay? Well, please keep in mind that we have elements and they are inside network objects and we have types that they are located at the library. For instance, here, I would like that, I, I would like that you start to pay attention when you are opening and closing the windows inside the Excellent Power Factory. For instance, here I am presenting an, uh, the one, one window that is the input data for the element asynchronous machine. As you can see over here at the very top, we have the title, but inside the title, you can see that here at the very end, you can realize that this object is a ELM. ASM, that is an element representing an asynchronous machine. And that object, you must realize that that object is inside the grid, okay? 
if you are if you use the data manager you can find the elements related with the asynchronous machine inside the folder for the grid okay but i told you before the asynchronous machine require an object that has some more data related with the model and that is the case that is the case for the type asynchronous machine and as you can see over here we have again the title and at the very end you can see the description that say typ a s m o and that is to told you that this this um, this object represent a type of synchronous asynchronous machine okay why am discussing this because i i say before the uh, dsl language require some objects and some of those objects are red color like the composite model and the model definition and some other objects they are in green color and those objects are for instance the common model but also the location is quite important the red color represent that they are located inside the local library of your uh, project or inside the global library on power factory and the dsl green color that represent that those objects are located inside the um, inside the network okay there is one missing object over there and that is the plant model and that is interconnecting the dsl with the models okay but i will discuss all the objects related with dsl in the next video what i want is that you be familiar with the colors locations because in a very simple exercise i will show you that you have been dealing with dsl models but you didn't know about that okay okay now going back inside um going back to um the the dsl language going back into the dsl language what i want that you understand is that Dixieland simulation language, Dixieland simulation language can be used in two types of models, okay? They are two, basically two types of models. Some models that they are already created, they are already created uh, and by Power Factory, and they put those models inside the global library. Those models receive the name built-in models. Those models are typically standardized models or models that has been proved by the excellent power factory and they are properly working and making your life easy to represent the dynamic performance of those models. For instance, built-in built models include all the components, all the controllers for the synchronous machine. In a minute, I will tell you that a classical synchronous machine at least requires two basic controllers. We require the governor and we require the AVR or automatic voltage regulator. And um, inside this global library, Dixieland Power Factory provides those models for you already tested, already the book and working for you. However, on the other hand, we have DSL models. And DSL models are, can be created by the user. And that is the main core of this series of video. I would like to teach you how to create those DSL models. However, I need to do this slowly in order that you can understand what is the DSL model in order to avoid any confusion or making errors later, okay? What I will do now is I will go to Power Factory because today I would like to discuss some built-in models and show you that you have been using dynamic model for a while, but you didn't realize that, okay? What I will do now is I would like to open the excellent Power Factory and that is what I will do. 
Right now, I am opening the Xilin Power Factory. Let me maximize here. And what you can see is that I am presenting the classical PM Anderson 9 boss systems. Okay? This is the classical PM Anderson 9 boss system. It's basically three, uh, three synchronous machines. We have been using this model for a while, okay? But what I will do today is this model, if you look over here, the data, there is not, there is not dynamic models related with this, with this uh, network, with this power system. If you look over here, I open the network model manager and I am showing you that we have objects over there, but the objects are basically boost bar, terminals, loads, synchronous machines, line, and to winding transformer. Also, we have line types, synchronous machine types, and two winding transformer. Okay? What I will do now is I would like to add a dynamic model for the first generator for generator number one. Okay? What I will do now is I will go here to this generator number one. Okay? And I want to add to this generator a dynamic model for the governor and then a, go a dynamic model for this um, AVR. Okay? What I will do now is I will do right button and I will use the context menu and I will go here to say define a governor and turbine. Okay, when I do so, I click here and Power Factory automatically will open something similar to the data manager. But in this example, I would like to go to the global library and I will be using a model, dynamic model that is already created inside Power Factory. As you can see here, Power Factory is opening for, for me in the global library that is here, the Dixin, Dixieland library, is opening the folder for the dynamic models. In this case, I will select here uh, PSSE compatible, and I will go down and I want to use a gas model, okay? Later, in another video, I will show you, but that is the model for a classical gas turbine, okay? At this moment, I would like just to take a click here, and then I will say, okay. And I don't know if you realize, but I took the model for the gas turbine, but that model was in red color, because it's coming from the library. But right now, let me show you the first su surprise. If you remember, I was talking about different kind of objects when you are using DSL. As you can see over here, the model definition is one of the objects that I say before. As you can see over here, we are creating a element DSL, and you realize that here on the top, because you can see the letters defining ELMDSL. And this model is created based in a model definition. And as you can see over there, I am, I am saying that this is the governor gas turbine, okay? As you can see, the element DSL is the interfa interface with the user. And this element DSL allow you to define the different parameters that they belong inside the, um, the, the, the dynamic model that we are creating. I don't suggest that you change the parameters over here. At least you are expert and you understand the physics behind the model. Changing parameters here is quite dangerous. If you change a time constant, you can create a massive problem. The most basic problem could be just creating something that physically impossible, that is physically impossible. For that reason, if you are a rookie or you are green with dynamic models, 
please don't put your hand over here and don't change the constant. What I will do is I will, I will left the default values and I will say, okay. And then Power Factory will tell me, okay, you have connected in green color here, you can see the synchronous machine. And that synchronous machine is connected with the DSL model that we create a few seconds ago. That is the governor, the governor that is based in a gas turbine model. Okay. Now, how do I know that those models are interconnected? Well, because you remember that I say to you that there is a very abstract object that receives the name frame. And the frame is basically defining the block interconnection and the signal flow inside your model. As you can see over here on the left hand side, those, those small boxes over here receive the name slots. And a slot is a location that we can include dynamic models. The first one here on the top is refer the synchronous machine slot. And over here, what we are saying is there is a network element that receives the name synchronous generator one, that is the synchronous machine where I am connecting my governor. There is a place here for the AVR. At the moment, I didn't define any AVR. Then we have a slot for the governor. And in this case, you can read over there that I install a governor that is coming from a gas turbine model. There is a space for the PSS. What does mean the PSS? Well, that is a very specialized control device that receives the name power system stabilizer, mainly designed for damping oscillations. Then we have the slot number five, and that is the over excitation controller. And number six is the over excitation slot. Those places are dedicated for two very important controllers when we are working with voltage stability. One of them is the under voltage and the other one is sorry, the under-exciting, and the other one is the over-exciting for the synchronous machine. In a minute, I will show you the connectivities and the signals, okay? But at the moment, what I want to do, what I want to do is just say, okay. Yes, great. Well, probably you say that, that some, nothing happened, but I will show you what Power Factory has done for you. Now you can see over here that there are few new objects inside your project. Objects that they, were, they weren't here before. For instance, there is a section dedicated of dynamic controllers. And over here you can see that there is a dynamic uh, controller that received the name composite model. I believe I already talked about this and this represents the plant model. Then we have the governor and turbine and that was the DSL that we created. But also we have model definitions and composite model frame, okay? What I will do, because we are running out of the time, what I will do right now is I would like to show you a few things. First, I am totally sure here, I double click on generator number one. And as you can see, the generator number one have a plant model. If you click here, you will see that this is the element composite. And as you can see over here, we have the slots. And those slots are coming from the frame, okay? And here we have, if we double click, we have the model, the DSL element that is representing the gas turbine that is coming from this uh, model definition that is the gas turbine model. Okay, now what I would like to do is the following. I will close he here, and now I will go from the big picture into the small picture, okay? What I would like to do right now is, let me open here uh, the network objects, yes, and let me go to the composite frame, 
And as you can see over here, there is a object over there in red, in red color. If you double click, you will realize that this is a block definition, okay? What I will do now is I will press right button and I will say, show the graphic. And hello, welcome to your first DSL understanding, okay? Over here, what I am showing you is the frame that is inside Power Factory. Power Factory create for you this frame. And this frame is interconnecting different slots. If you remember, I say to you that the idea is if we have a synchronous machine, this synchronous machine has different controllers and also some measurements. But this, con this synchronous machine, you can see over here, element synchronous machine, is connected to an automatic voltage regulator, is connected to a governor, and the governor is acting on the mechanical power of this synchronous machine. And the AVR is acting on the excitation voltage or field voltage of this synchronous machine. And over here, we have another controllers. I remember that I told you about the PSS or Power System Stabilizer. Here we have the over-excited limiter and the under-excited limiter. Okay, what I'm telling you is this is the frame that is already defined by uh, Dixieland for you, making your life extremely easy. But this is the big picture about the uh, the DSL model. Okay. Here, what we have is the interconnection of many signals and the direction that is defined by those arrows. As you can see, the output is coming from this red button and coming to the inputs in green color. Again, colors are quite important inside the Excellent Power Factory. And also we have here those boxes over here that you must realize that they are like a 3D, I don't know, I don't, I don't care, but they are a special symbol. They are not just plain boxes, but those boxes receive the name slot. Well, I need that you understand that this object is the object that we use to define a frame. A frame, there is not models inside the frame. They are not equations inside the frame. What is inside the frame is the, the places that we need to put the dynamic models and the signal flow inside your model, okay? Well, if you remember, I add a governor and the governor, is, the slot dedicated for the governor is located over there, okay? What I will do now for you is I would like to show you one more um, one more object, okay? What I will do is open here. Now I will go to model definition. And what I am looking for is the gas turbine model, okay? There are more models over here, but I will discuss those models later. Those models over here, they are the basic units that define very specific functionalities, like, for instance, the first order transfer function that you can see here at the top. And those block functions, those block models, they are used to create the big model that that is the governor, okay? However, because I am running out the time, I will, I will just click right bottom, and then I will say, show the graphic and welcome to the gas turbine governor, okay? Over here, I am showing you one DSL model that was created by Power Factory. Specifically, this is the model definition for the gas turbine governor. As you can see over here, now the boxes have different, different shape because inside, inside each of those boxes, there are equations and there are parameters that they are used to represent the dynamic behavior of each function. For instance, this model over here 
k is just a function, a block diagram that is equivalent to a gain in, in any control system. It's just multiplying the signal, the input signal, by the letter k. However, when we compile this DSL model, that is, that is the object representing to the D turbine, okay? The arrows in this diagram, they represent the signal flow inside the DSL model. The signal flow inside the DSL model. And those very specific uh, circles over here, if you remember control theory, we have summation or adding points. And also we have multiplication and division, but I will go in those details later in another model, okay? What I need that you understand is this is, this is the graphical representation for the gas turbine model. And if you double click any of these boxes, for instance, these very specific bots, as you can see over here, this is a block reference. And a block reference is pointing to an object that is located at the global library. In this case, this very specific block is defining a game, okay? You must remember a block, um, the use of block um, inside control theory, okay? Well, um, I show you uh, two different graphic objects. One of them is the framework, and, and that is the frame. And in the frame, we are connecting here the AVR, uh, sorry, the governor, the gas turbine, and the governor is coming from this other graphic object representing the model definition of the uh, go, uh, of the gas turbine governor okay okay well what i will do now is i will come back to my presentation because we are running out of the time and what i need that you understand is when you are using dynamic models, when you are using dynamic models, you must understand the interconnection and interactions between different objects. Some of those objects, they are in green color and they are located inside the network model. For instance, you require an element that is going into the network. In this case, the element that is connected to the network and interacting with the other electrical components in your power system is the synchronous machine, the generator G1, okay? The core of this uh, DSL model is the element composite. And we call this one just for basic reference, the plant model. The plant model is interconnecting the network elements like the synchronous generator, but is connecting the synchronous generator signals with the AVR and with the governor. And uh, you must remember that I double click here and I open the DSL model. The DSL model is coming from the element DSL that is created when we combine, when we compile the composite block definition. And what we are doing here is including this model that is inside one of the slots inside the frame, okay? Well, at this moment, I have done a lot about DSL. Probably you will say, no, but I have done this in the past. Yes, every single, every single person that is familiar with uh, dynamic simulations using Power Factory must know how to install a governor. Anyone that is running basic simulations, RMS simulation, must know how to integrate a very basic AVR. But what I am teaching you over here is there is an integration that you must understand. For a DSL model, you require a frame, 
you require a composite block definition, a model definition, you require a common model, and you require a composite model. What I'm trying to say is when you combine those four different objects and you do that successfully with the proper calculation, the proper numerical equations, you are creating the SL models, okay? Now, what I need to say, what I need to tell you right now is DSL modeling is not easy. It's not easy because you need to understand clearly several factors. You need to be clear about control theory. If you are not, if you don't understand control theory, I believe you will not be successful on creating DSL models. What is the reason? Because Power Factory use differential equations and use differential equations inside those models. And one very important aspect is Power Factory use numerical integration. And Power Factory, because it's using numerical integration, require initial conditions. And because you are creating your crazy model, your very exotic wind turbine, or your very interesting heat pumps, or your very fancy dynamic model, you are responsible for calculating those initial conditions. And you cannot be lazy and avoid that task. That task is very important. Calculating initial conditions require that you put on the paper the differential equations that are inside your model. And you must be able to use some mathematical theory and calculate the initial conditions. I received thousand emails. And when I say thousand, probably I am short in the number. I received so many emails of people sending me DSL models and they say, I cannot calculate the initial conditions. And it's basically because they don't understand the model. They don't understand the physics behind the model. They don't have a clue about the equations. Power Factory used those beautiful and fancy graphic uh, representation for the models. Okay, that is nice. That is helping you. But inside the model definition, you must write differential equations. And you must use a state representation and a state variable inside those models. And that is where you need to understand control theory in order to solve the problems related with DSL modeling. Okay, 37 minutes. This is extremely long video. I'm sorry. I am really sorry that this video was so long. Also, um, this, this video is just a step forward on the DSL modeling. Here, I presented the basic and generic way. I mean, I didn't formally introduce those four objects. I just presented that you have been using this, but Power Factory is the right button for you and make your life easy. In the next video, I will start to create the DSL model from scratch, but I will do something similar with the generator, including a governor, including the AVR, okay? Well, um, I hope you are enjoying this DSL, this excellent simulation language classes. Um, and right now I am extremely busy. I don't know when this video will be online. And because I have been running many other um, initiatives, especially with protection, especially with advanced power system analysis. You must remember that Power Factory for me is a hobby. It's not my main job, okay? For me, it's just the tool that is helping me to do my research and help my PhD student and my master's student and also some postdoc somewhere else, okay? Um, well, thank you very much for watching the video. That's all for today. See you, bye now.